All right, everyone, now it's time for what might actually be a legit October surprise, which is Project Veritas, which was very important in the 2016 election. They just released, actually, I would give this the rating of a doozy. This is more important than a lot of the stuff that they dumped in 2016 relating to the fucking Clinton camp. Uh, a video of Claire McCaskill, uh, this is undercover footage that they took, uh, Claire McCaskill and some of her staffers, actually, uh, talking about guns and other issues, and apparently uh, in private, uh, she and her staff are very open about the fact, hey, yeah, basically, if Democrats got a majority, yeah, we'd be looking at, you know, a semi-automatic rifle ban, we'd be looking at other uh, sort of legislation, gun taxes. Basically, she sounds like Michael Bloomberg when she's in private company that she thinks agrees with her and is, you know, Democratic operatives. Of course, turns out it's Project Veritas, so <laughs> actually James O'Keefe, more of a tradcon than anything. It was funny how they tried to cast him off as a Nazi or a charlatan. It's like, yeah, a couple of his reports have, have uh, been selectively edited. That means that everything that he reports on is automatically false. The Democrats want this to be believed, but here's the problem. Here's the big problem. Claire McCaskill is running with an appoint or two of, of Hawley, her opponent, her Republican opponent in a state that is red, in a state that went for Trump, in a state that is very averse to gun control. This is not going to go well for her. This could very well lose her Senate seat. By the way, that gives the Republicans control of the Senate. That seat flipping gives them control. That's a toss-up seat. In fact, it's the most important toss-up in the fucking race. The, the most important targeted Senate seat and arguably the most important legislative position in the entire midterms is the McCaskill seat. Because McCaskill is, is a fairly well-received, sort of moderate-ish Democrat, at least, I guess, in public, uh, who unfortunately has been near to knocked out already. She's running in a statistical tie with her opponent, and, and keep in mind, that flips the Senate. This is, she's of the vulnerable uh, Democratic incumbents. She's got the most, I think, name recognition. You've probably heard her name before. Most people probably don't know she's the senator from Missouri or something, but they've heard her name. She's recognizable enough to be on that second tier of individuals within the Democratic Party. Sort of within striking distance of having, you know, Warren uh, or Gillibrand style name recognition. Someone who they could have, you know, potentially groomed for a presidential run. Having a state like Missouri that is red, but, you know, it's only leans red. It's not, you know, Wyoming or something. Having a candidate from a state like that gives the Democrats at least the, the possibility uh, of winning a state they otherwise don't really have a shot in. It's sort of like when you have a Republican from a state that maybe leans blue. A Republican from, from New Mexico. Uh, or from a swing state, you know, an Iowa or something. Typically a good idea. The fact that Trump's from New York City uh, obviously doesn't help the Republicans much. They're not going to be able to grab a state like New York. Uh, some people, by the way, thought in 2016, oh, the Republicans will win California. And I'm like, that's pie in the sky, dude. But they can definitely win, like, Michigan. <laughs> and they did. Uh, McCaskill's really, this is, sort of stuff is really becoming a problem for the Democrats. You've got three separate uh, instances in the last week of severe problems for the Democrats that have taken a significant toll, I think, overall on the party's uh, support base. Number one, really, with calls for political intimidation in the wake of Kavanaugh. They screwed the pooch on Kavanaugh, they, they enraged the left, and what happened was that the opportunists outside of actual politics, Holder doesn't have an official position. Clinton doesn't have an official position. Other than Maxine Waters, she's, she's the rogue. She's the, the insane one. The James Brown look-alike, uh, plus 20 or 30 years after he fucking died. Uh, here's what happened. The opportunist said, well, the far left is really riled up. Let's capitalize on this to sell more books and cheap, shitty merchandise that we imported from China. Not exactly made in America pink pussy hats, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so they, they made it really difficult for the party by saying, oh, yeah, we can't be civil. Oh, yeah, let's kick them when they're down. <laughs> so weird shit like this. It's like they started to sound like some of the more vicious Trump fans, uh, the projections of them that they themselves had made and called out as evil and horrible and fascistic even a, a single year ago. Then you have Elizabeth Warren, literally, you know, in the last 48 hours, fucking imploding. I mean, her Senate seat's safe. She's not going to lose. She should, but she won't lose her position in the Senate. But the Caskill might, because now you've got this. This is the big number three, and that's sort of all you need for... You don't have one October surprise. You kind of have three at this point. These are all very significant. I think the Warren stuff is more significant than the McCaskill video, uh, specifically because if you're in a close race already, if the party loses a couple points of support, you probably lose anyway. McCaskill's riding very close to that point at which she can't even win in her own state. And now, 
This will probably invigorate Republican voters to turn out and vote. And you've got to understand there's a difference between the national picture and the local picture in politics. A lot of people ignored this in 2016. That's why their, uh, their uh, predictions were off. Look at the actual state-to-state -state polls and you get a picture that is drastically different from the generic ballot. The generic ballot includes a bunch of Democrats in places like California and New York. But it doesn't matter how many Democrats vote in California and New York. The Democrats already control the states. So in a race where a simple majority is all you need, it doesn't matter if you get 80, 90% of the vote. Who fucking cares? You are already going to win that seat. Meanwhile, you've still got six important toss-ups. The Democrats can't lose any of them. The Democrats can't regain control of the Senate without winning all six toss-ups at this point. McCaskill probably just fucked herself. A couple of these other races tilt red anyway. The Republicans could walk away with easily more Senate seats than they have now. That fundamentally means no blue wave. If the Repub Let's say the Republicans do really well in those toss-ups. Let's say they micro-target them, the, the polls are skewed, something happens, McCaskill gets knocked down. Let's say they come away with 54-55 seats, which is within the realm of possibility. In fact, it's not all that much unlikely. Where's the blue wave? The Republicans, Mitch McConnell say, oh, I don't see one. I think it's behind a big red wall at this point. I just can't see over it. It's too tall and strong. It's a, it's a big wall. It's bigly. It's, it's the Trump wall. And he'll chuckle about it, and he'll technically be right. And then Elizabeth Warren, she's getting called out by the fucking Cherokee Nation. Now, I, I wish that she were running in a state that just leaned blue instead of a place like Massachusetts where, you know, basically two out of every three people are diehard partisan Democrats. She could actually lose. Should vote for Shiva, by the way. You hear a Rep deal, I think his name is, or Dial, uh, her Republican opponent. I mean, he can't win. He's like 10, 20 points behind. Don't even f fucking vote for Shiva. Stand on principle. She's going to win, unfortunately. But if Elizabeth Warren stays in the Democratic Party, she might keep doing stupid things. That could be helpful for 2020. Maybe you should keep her in there. Hell, maybe you should keep McCaskill in there and just keep uh, leaking undercover videos. I kid, you should vote her out. To the Missouri voters, I'd say, yeah, you should vote for Holly. Um, if there was any question, with McCaskill being, again, supposedly a moderate voice within the Democratic Party. But if she's talking like this in secret, how do you think she talks to the rest of her Democratic cohorts? Well, Missouri's a red state. I mean, why would you want to send her to the Senate? Holly's not perfect. I don't even know that much about his platform, but it doesn't even matter. If you've got a candidate who is openly saying in, in an undercover video, as McCaskill herself is on this video, link in the description, she's openly saying, well, no, 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 my voters can't know the fact that if the Democrats do well enough in the Senate, we're, we're going to push more gun control. No, 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 they can't know that. You know, we're very good at branding. We're very good at marketing ourselves. Her staff are like, yeah, she's really good at marketing things, at, at, at basically being... A shyster, essentially, doing the Clinton thing. Um, and don't get me wrong, most politicians are like that. Republican, Democrat, Independent, fucking Libertarian. Uh, a lot of people are like that. I'm, I don't have any illusion about that fact, but for her to be caught out saying it, when someone is caught expressing that, they should be punished. Um, the hope is that generally, you're, you're usually trying to hope that the politician is more or less being open with you. When you get proof that they're not, you should kick them out of office. I would say this, if this were a Republican candidate, I'd be like, the Republicans should jettison them. Just like, uh, what was his name there? That one dude who had a sex assault case, uh, and the Republicans uh, were briefly looking into it, and uh, I can't remember his name. It was around the same time as the Al Franken uh, bullshit and the Conyers stuff, and they got forced out. I, what was the name of that one Republican, I think, in the House who liquidated like 40,000 taxpayer dollars to pay off like a sex assault claimant or something? And at the time, I was like, well, the Republicans really need to get rid of people like that in their ranks. It will become a problem. If, if a Democrat rapes somebody, apparently nobody gives a damn. But if a Republican does it, it's front page news forever, even if it's only a mere allegation. So you need to kick these people aside, uh, even if you think, well, maybe, maybe kind of sort of, you know, they weren't guilty. OK, just for, for the good of the party, if you're thinking in a strategic sense, I suppose, uh, you should kick them aside uh, with McCaskill. People like that are going to be dead weight on the Democratic Party. The problem is that the most recognizable faces within the Democratic Party are all unhinged. It makes Trump's job easy. It makes the Republicans' job easy in campaigning. They're standing back right now, letting the Democrats mainly implode, and they're simply reacting with mockery and bemusement. That's the way to go, by the way. If you can keep doing that for another week or so, there's no longer enough time left in campaigning for the Democrats to make up the difference. It's the middle of October. There's less than a month left until people are voting in the midterms. 
all of the trajectories appear to be in the Republicans' favor. They're going to keep the Senate. That's almost certain at this point. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that the Republicans maintain control of the Senate. Bye-bye, blue wave. There's an increasing chance, albeit technically still less than 50-50, that the Republicans could narrowly retain the House. Again, if they manage to retain the House, you are about to see the biggest mental breakdown of a political party in your lifetime. No matter how, by the way, how old you are. Some people in my eyes say, oh yeah, I'm 75 and watch you every day religiously. Okay, uh, you remember the 60s or, or maybe early 70s. You remember like Carter's implosion. Uh, this will be bigger. The Democratic Party is going to be forced. They won't have a choice. Their own lay people will revolt within the party and rip it to shreds. That's about all. Peace out.